Buddha Dasa, humble servant at the lotus feet of Lord Buddha. This is a story of a great man who dedicated his life at the lotus feet of Lord Buddha, who, out of profound compassion, devoted his entire life for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Bahujana Hitaya, Bahujana Sukhaya. Logan Ukampaya Born in Impal, Manipur on full moon day of 12th March 1922. Rabindra Kumar Banerjee, who was to be our Bharabhanti and to continue the legacy of the Enlightenment, was an exceptional child and showed extraordinary signs of greatness from young age. His elder brother, who was an excellent astrologer, predicted that one day Rabindra would become a monk. After his school education, he joined Institute of Engineering and Technology, Kolkata. He was fascinated by scientific and technological progress taking place and was so convinced that science would end the problems of the world and make a better place to live soon to be found out that it was wrong having completed his graduation he joined gandhiji's freedom struggle and also participated in the quit india movement and went to jail with many freedom fighters then he joined indian british army and was posted in Malaysia at the peak of Second World War, fighting the Japanese. Witnessing the horror of the war and suffering caused by the violence led him to deeply contemplate on meaning of life. He realized it was not his way of life. On returning to India, he resigned from the army service and started volunteering in Dharmashalas and wandered in search of deeper meaning of life. On the day of Indian independence, on 15th August 1947, Rabindra renounced the worldly life in search of freedom and truth. He wandered from Kashmir to Kanyakumari for two years as a wandering ascetic, Satyapriya. He was a Swami at Ramakrishna Ashram in Kerala. Later, he also meditated under Sri Ramana Maharishi at Tiruvannamalai. However, the different ashrams and gurus whom he met could not quench his thirst for truth. So he decided to study the Bible, the Quran, the Gita and the Dhammapada. Study of Dhammapada was an eye-opener for him. He found what he was looking for such a long time, the ultimate truth of life as described by the Supreme Buddha in Dhammapada, change his life forever. This was truly the turning point in Bhante's life and he decided to take the three refuges, Tisrana, then and there by himself. Buddhang saranang gachami, Dhammang saranang gachami, Sanghang saranang gachami. As he began searching for a Buddhist master, he came across a great monk named Most Venerable Chandamani Mahathira of Myanmar in Kushinara. Then on Vesak full moon day of 1949, he was ordained as a Buddhist monk and was given the name Buddha Rakhita, which means one who is protected by the Buddha. After his ordination as a monk, he was sent to Sri Lanka for Buddhist studies. He studied Pali and Sutta from Venerable Jnana Tiloka Mahathera, Vinaya from Venerable Vidrapola Piyatissa Mahanaya Kathera and Abhidhamma from Venerable 
Viru Kane Chandimal Mahan Nayake Theda. While staying in Sri Lanka, Bante used to go for arms round, walking long distances every day. His teacher, Venerable Nyana Tiloka Mahathera, asked him, Why do you take such great trouble to walk for arms food when lot of Danak also comes to monastery? Bhante answered that he needs to earn punya, merit, so that he can bring back Buddhism in India. That was the moment Bhante deeply felt the need of reviving the precious Dhamma in the land of its origin, India. Bhante also realized that to achieve his mission, he must gain mastery over Tibetaka, both in theory and in practice. So he went to Burma for further studies. There he practiced meditation under the renowned meditation master, Most Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw. He studied Patana under the Most Venerable Mula Patana Sayadaw and Venerable Narada and Abhidhamma under the Most Venerable Yamaka Sayadaw. He was fortunate to get the opportunity to learn the Dhamma from such great masters of 20th century. During this time, he was invited to join the Chatta Sangayana, the sixth Buddhist council held under the patronage of government of Burma. He worked editing the complete Tipitaka, which brought out the entire Pali Tipitaka, Atagatha and Tika. He used to recount, saying, in the life of a monk, it is a rare opportunity to get such great teachers in the right time and to participate in a Sangayana. In 1955, he returned back to India, having himself well versed in Dhamma. On the request of Venerable Bhikkhu Jagadish Kashap, he started teaching Abhidhamma and Pali at Navanalanda Mahavihara Pali Postgraduate Institute with the support of Indian government. However, he was soon convinced that this would not help him much to achieve his mission. So he decided to quit the job and traveled to Buddha Gaya looking for a spiritual sign that would help him to decide the future course of his life. On the full moon day of May, during Visak celebrations, he met Ms. Bianca Manasinghe, niece of Venerable Anagarika Dharmapala, who was in charge of Mahabodhi society in Sri Lanka. She requested Bhante to develop a center in Bangalore, where a plot of land was donated by the Maharaja of Mysore. Barabhante accepted the request and arrived in Bangalore on 5th June 1956 with the sapling of the sacred Bodhi tree. With the planting of that Bodhi sapling, Mahabodhi Society was established and as it started growing, the great saga of Mahabodhi Society too started unfolding. With just 30 rupees in hand and from a thatched kuti of coconut leaves, with sheer determination, Bhante transformed it into a beautiful spiritual sanctuary that we can witness today. He was a man of great vision. From the very beginning, he started giving discourses and teaching meditation as Dhammadana. He realized that without creating human resource, it is impossible to carry out the Dhamma work. So he started monastic training center and meditation centers. People from India and abroad were ordained and he put forth great effort in teaching and training them. Compassion in action was his mission. His compassion moved him to start hospital dana services by distributing 
fruits and buns to poor patients. Not only that, he was so determined to help the poor patients that he built hospitals for them, following the advice of the Buddha. One who serves the sick serves me. That is how Mahabodhi Buns and Casualty Center came up in Victoria Hospital, Rural Health Care Center at Sakalwara, and he donated thousands of artificial limbs to differently able people. It was his nature to respond to suffering people instinctively. When thousands of Tibetan refugees came to India, he was one of the earliest to respond with relief and to help raising funds to build settlements in South India. He clearly saw that the three-pronged approaches are necessary for the revival of Buddha Dhamma in India. The first one is spiritual practice. For that, he was running monastic training center, discourses and meditation camps. Second one was educational. Without education, no society can come up in this intellectually driven world. So he took up moral and secular educational programs to empower the minds, which was the basic necessity for poor people to come up in life. The third one is economic development. This can happen through right livelihood, which means to work hard to earn without harming others. To achieve this, he started branches in Mysore, Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura and Ladakh. This holistic developmental approach is still what is followed in Mahabodhi institutions all over India. He was also a prolific writer and started his own printing press called Tipitaka Press. He published two monthly magazines, Swayam Sahaya and Dhamma. Later, he is still running after 40 years and in addition to this, hundreds of books were authored by Bantiji. He was a great Dhamma teacher and a tough one, no doubt. He said, the clay sauce, defilements have taken deep roots over countless lives and there is no other way but to tackle them with a strong mind. This will not happen without a highly disciplined life based on morality, meditation and wisdom as taught by the Buddha. His one clear advice to monks was not to compromise with anything but stick to the Dhamma and Vinaya scrupulously. For him, every truth seeker was equally important and he would go out of the way to teach them. He would spend a lot of time in instructing and guiding individually, no matter how troublesome it can be for his health. Passions and persistence he employed was worthy of emulation. He was a true Kalyanamitta, a noble friend who wished nothing but happiness of his disciples. He showed us by example that there is freedom and richness in simplicity and renunciation. He was a model of renunciation for all monks at the monastery. His clothes were made of over 30 to 40 years old shawls and scarves, which were stitched again and again and formed into warm clothing. He was very respectful to environmental issues and by nature he loved natural way of life. He loved trees and flowers and was very sensitive to them. He would pay a lot of attention to save a plant if it is drying or dying. When it comes to his daily puja and meditation, 
he did not compromise with anything. Even during serious sickness, he would reach to puja room and offer vandana and meditate for hours together. Bharabhante, not only did he follow the path of Dhamma himself, but he would exhort everyone to practice and to preserve it for the future generations. He often used to tell that till we attain Nibbana, we have to come back to this samsara again and again. We need pure Buddha's teachings. If we establish good monastic Sangha and good lay society, we may land up again here and get all the suitable conditions to attain Nibbana. If we don't strive for creating such a society, we are the losers. The real service to oneself is by making oneself more selfless for others. Bhante's approach to life was simple and clear, to live with understanding, so that every moment of life is used for further spiritual progress. Every action has to conduce to fulfillment of one or the other parami. He considered every good deed as an offering of flower at the lotus feet of Lord Buddha. He worshipped the Buddha through actions. Age has no impact on his work. He had undergone seven operations, including open heart surgery, but he did not let it hinder his work for sasana. He would often say, I will continue to work till my last breath. As it's the law of nature, in 2010, Bhante fell severely sick. But we could see Bhante undisturbed and calm. He would say that this life has been very rewarding and he has no complaints about it. He wanted to make this as the last life or at the most just one more if the spiritual faculties are not fully matured. That too, he wanted to come as an Arya but not as a Putujjana. In his coming life, he wished to become a monk at the age of seven and live a strict holy life until he gets enlightened. Bharabhanteji's life has been like the lotus flower that grows in muddy pound but still remains unsoiled and blooms when sun rises. Let us pay homage to our respected and beloved Bharabhanteji. Let us carry forward his teachings and let us emulate his dedication. The best way to do so is to follow the Buddha's path like he did. Bharabhanteji would often say, if there is any honor which can be considered as highest, then it is to be Buddha Dasa, a humble servant at the lotus feet of the Buddha. May the blessings of Parabhanteji be upon us all. Mahamudi started in a small way, my dear, and it has grown this size. And it will grow far more, believe me. All because of the good work and the good mind. There is nothing that a human being cannot do if he or she wants to. You can become a Buddha, the most perfect one, the supremely enlightened teacher of gods and men. 
So if you really want to do something good, nothing will come out of it. But you must be prepared to pay a price for this. And the price is discipline, purity, holiness, nobility of mind, not meanness, not selfishness. Keep that in mind. May the grace of Lord Buddha surround your lives. May you all be enabled to live the path of metta, walk on the path of metta, live the life of metta. Nothing is greater than metta, universal love, the peaceful path of goodwill and amity. May you all be happy.